Welcome back to Moonlight Reel. Today's foray into magical things takes us back to the Winx Club for Kids website and the Althea Library. We're going to look at a book entitled Guide to Earth Plants, Historical and Magical Uses by Rose Blossomwood and Ellen Greenfern. Somebody had a lot of fun coming up with those names. So I'm going to read each of the entries. There are, what, five, seven of them? You know, I've forgotten already and I just did them. But anyway, I'm going to read the book, and then I'm going to take a look at Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs to see if it has anything else to say about the magical plants mentioned. So, here we go! This is The Guide to Earth Plants, Historical and Magical Uses by Rose Blossomwood and Ellen Greenfern. Some have questioned the value of a volume dedicated to earth plants, as there are very few magical creatures left on earth, and, as far as we know, no fairies left. This does not diminish the value or the magic of the plants left in the earth realm. One never knows when they may need to know about a plant from a different realm. The motto of the Solarian Scouts is always be prepared. This volume will help you do just that. Plants were given their magical powers with the creation of the universe by the great dragon, and they still derive their power from the sun. Earth has an amazing array of plants, with over 230,000 species identified, and these plants are the source of almost all life on Earth. Most of these plants have magical and healing properties, which were once well known throughout the realms, when Earth still had a magic population. It is our purpose to provide a guide to common magical earth plants that will enable you to use them both inside the classroom and out. Every fairy could benefit from knowing a spell or two that uses the magic of these humble plants. Our first example is a plant that you would be able to find almost everywhere on earth. It is often considered a weed by most earthlings, and some people will try to remove it from their gardens and lawns. If they only knew the magic inherent in this tenacious little plant, they would not be so keen to dispose of it. Our first plant is the dandelion, Taraxicum officinal. I probably didn't say that correctly. The dandelion is easy to spot as it grows almost anywhere. The sunny little yellow bloom sits on top of a single hollow stem. When the stem is plucked, a milky white liquid flows from the broken stem. This is latex, and it protects the plant by sealing off little cuts or nicks that may happen to the stem or leaves. The leaves themselves are flat and broad, with serrated or rough-looking edges. In the early part of its growth, the flower is yellow, but as it matures, its seeds become visible, as the white balls of fluff that sit on top of the stems. The leaves of this plant are sometimes eaten, but can be bitter if they are old, and of course, the dandelion is not always welcomed by gardeners, so it is one of the plants that has the most poison sprayed on it. For that reason, it is not recommended that you try the leaves unless you have, known them, have grown them yourself and know they have not been sprayed. These are powerful magical plants with their sunny, helpful dispositions. They are useful for looking into the future and for wishes. To make a wish with a dandelion, wait until it is mature and its seeds are ready to blow off. Concentrate your winks, make your wish, and blow the puffy seeds off the stem. Your wishes can attach themselves to the floating seeds and carry your wishes off to be fulfilled. To use a dandelion to look into the future, you must first gather five of the flowers. Then take a clear bowl and fill it three quarters of the way with water. Float the blossoms on top of the water and start to concentrate on the surface of the water. You have to let your eyes relax and soften. Clear your head of any other thoughts and continue to watch the surface. Images will start to appear in the water. Pay attention to them as they hold clues to the future. And here's what Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs has to say about dandelions. It suggests, to find out how long you will live, blow the seeds off the head of a dandelion. You will live as many years as there are seeds left on the head. Cunningham may suggest this, but I think it's a terrible idea. Don't, don't do magic to tell how long you'll live. It's just, it'll just make you scared later on, and it probably doesn't work right anyway. Cunningham also suggests, to tell what time it is, blow three times at a dandelion seed head. The number of seeds left is the hour that it is. So in case you don't have a watch, you can use a dandelion to tell what time it is. 
Dandelion roots can be dried and roasted in ground like coffee and used to make tea. This tea will promote psychic powers uh, if you drink it. If you can also just leave it like in a cup steaming and place beside your bed and it will call spirits that you might see in your dreams or see in the night. You can also use the puffball part to send a message to someone. Blow at the seed head uh, in the direction of where the person is, and the dandelion seeds, instead of carrying your wishes to the heavens, they will carry your message to the person that you want to send it to. Another bit in here says that dandelions buried in the northwest corner of the house bring favorable winds. I'm not sure what kind of winds are favorable, and I think burying any dandelion is just going to lead to having more dandelions. But that's what Cunningham thinks of dandelions. The second plant we're going to look at is calendula, also known as the marigold. Another common magical plant is calendula, which is often called marigold or pot marigold. It has many bright yellow or orange petals and leaves with fine hairs on the stems and leaves of the plant. Calendula has been cultivated and kept around homes through the ages because it was recognized early on that this plant was helpful in the healing of wounds, mostly small cuts and scrapes. It grows throughout the world in light and sandy soil. In temperate climes, such as in the Pacific Northwest of the United States, this little ray of sunshine can still bloom in the middle of winter. As mentioned, this plant has been known to be a good healer of skin wounds and cuts, and still is used in various creams and lotions for sensitive skin. The blossoms are also edible, and are often sold in summer flower salad mixes. They will be the long, thin yellow petals to perk up the color. Magically, these little flowers can be used to help heal people and places, as well as being useful for dreaming of the future. It was also noted in an ancient text, that a girl who touched hundreds of petals of calendula with her bare feet could understand the language of birds. A great spell for dreaming the future is to collect the blossoms of the marigold on the waxing or full moon. These blossoms are to be spread under the dreamer's bed, and just before falling asleep, the dreamer should repeat, Tiny sunny marigold underneath my bed, help to see the dreams are true that come inside my head. In the morning, the dream is to be written down, and one of the flowers is to be pressed into a piece of paper and tied to the description of the dream. The remaining calendula is to be swept up and put outside in an eastern part of the garden. And now we'll look at what Cunningham has to say about marigolds, also known as calendula. He, sadly, he does not repeat the thing about being able to talk to birds. I was hoping that would be in here, because that's really neat, and I don't think I've read it anywhere else. He suggests marigolds picked at noon will have the power of the sun to strengthen and comfort your heart. It also suggests garlands of marigolds strung around your house will keep evil from entering and scattering it under your bed will protect you while you're asleep and make your dreams come true. It also says it's effective in discovering a thief who has robbed you, although I'm not, it doesn't actually say how that worked. A whole lot of really old spells are about discovering thieves. I guess, you know, back in ancient times they didn't have police and CSIs like now, so they had to use magic whenever anybody stole anything. Marigolds added to the bathwater win the respect and admiration of everyone you meet, according to Mr. Cunningham. It also says looking at the brightly colored flowers strengthens your eyesight, although I wouldn't bet on that and that carrying the flowers in your pocket helps justice smile favorably on you if you have to go to court. Oh wait, here it is, it's at the bottom, I didn't see it. If a girl touches the petals of the marigold with her bare feet, she will understand the languages of birds. It doesn't say here that she has to walk on hundreds and hundreds of them, it says just, it doesn't say any number. Okay, so, when spring comes, get some marigolds and try this. Yes, we will definitely try this. Our third magical plant is the camellia, Camellia japonica. Camellias are commonly grown as garden plants due to their gorgeous flowers and delicate scent. These showy blooms are often some of the first of the season. Camellias are slow-growing evergreen shrubs with glossy rounded leaves in temperate places like the Pacific Northwest. Blooms can start as early as January and continue until April. 
These beautiful garden shrubs are a wonderful addition to any magical garden. Though, this, though the same genus as tea, which is apparently Camellia sinistis, sinistis, the leaves of Camellia japonica are not edible, but their flowers have been highly prized for their use in lotions and creams because of their light and delicate scent. The leaves and bark of camellias have often been used as fabric dyes, with shades varying from greenish-gray to reddish-brown. Camellias are also lovely cut flowers, as the blooms can last up to ten days in a vase. In Victorian times, these flowers were often a gift that signified supreme loveliness, and a person would give a camellia to the person they felt ruled their heart. Magically, these lovely flowers are ruled by the moon and the element of water. They enhance luxury and riches, and can even be used in spells to help careers. To use camellias in a spell to invite more wealth and luxury into your life, collect the camellia flowers under a full moon. Arrange the flowers in a clear vase in the light of the moon. A bottle, bowl, or glass may be used, as long as the moonlight can filter through it. As you arrange the flowers, repeat the following. Moonlight shimmer and blossoms pale, away from snows and protected from hail. I've brought you inside and now ask this gift. Please, into my life, let luxury drift. So that's a spell you can do using camellias. Uh, Mr. Cunningham does not have much to say about them. He just says that they're good for spells to bring wealth and luxury, and that's all he's got in his book about the camellia. Our fourth magical plant is peppermint, mentha piperita. Peppermints, along with many of the related mints, have been valued by cultures around the world for its magical and healing properties. Peppermint is a small, easy-to-grow mint. It prefers partial shade and grows well in a variety of soils, liking moist, well-drained soil the best. It is also a plant that grows very well in pots, making it a valuable plant for a magical container garden. Peppermint leaves can be used fresh or dried, in, or dried in water to create a soothing tea that helps calm nervousness and upset stomachs. Peppermint oil combined with lavender oil in a carrier oil can be rubbed on the temples to ease headaches. If the oil is unavailable, a compress can be made by soaking a washcloth in a strong tea and gently wringing it out. The compress can then be placed on the forehead to relieve discomfort. Magically, the peppermint can be used in a variety of spells. Its magical properties include purification, wealth, sleep, love, healing, developing psychic powers, and travel spells. The following transformational travel spell can be used. However, caution must be taken. Any travel spell involving peppermint will result in a journey that can bring change and transformation. If you are not ready for a journey, if you are not ready for a journey that will bring this into your life, do not use this spell. And that's in all caps. Simple travel spell. Pick some fresh peppermint leaves and in a place where you will not be disturbed. And bleh, And sit in a place where you will not be disturbed, I assume. Connect to your winks. When you feel your winks very strongly in your body, start to scratch the letters PL into the leaves. PL stands for Pluto, the planet for transformations. While you do this, imagine yourself traveling and changing in, in a positive way because of your travels. When you have finished imagining this in as much detail as possible, place the leaves in a bag that you carry with you, like your school bag, purse, or favorite duffel, and get ready to travel. And that's the end of the part on peppermint. It doesn't really say... Does the spell mean that you're going to get a chance to take a trip soon, or is the imagination your trip? I think it's the first one. I think the spell means casting that spell, and then pretty soon you'll get a chance to go on vacation that will transform you in a cool way. About Peppermint, Cunningham does not talk about its use in travel spells. He says that its presence raises the vibrations of an area, he says that putting some beneath your pillow may give you dreams of the future. It also says that to cleanse a place of evil and negativity, rub peppermint leaves across the furniture, walls, and floorboards. Although I would add 
I think peppermint will kind of mark up your walls. It's pretty green and kind of, you know, gooey. It will rub off on the walls. So even if you're cleansing negativity, be very careful. Your parents would mind if you marked up their walls. Cunningham also says that the uh, ancient philosopher Pliny stated that peppermint excites love, and so peppermint can be an ingredient in a love spell if you need to cast one. Our penultimate magical plant is lavender. Lavender has been grown in kitchen gardens for hundreds of years for its beautiful scent and healing and relaxing properties. Lavender flowers are a pale bluish purple color and a single stem has many of the tiny fragrant flowers on it. The leaves are oblong and vary in color from a dark green to a grayish green color. It is often planted along walkways or around entrances to homes to provide a gentle welcoming floral greeting to all that enter the home. Lavender flowers are edible and make a lovely tea. However, as always, be sure the lavender has not come in contact with chemicals if you are using it. Drinking lavender tea or rubbing the lavender flowers or essential oil on your skin is a lovely way to soothe frayed nerves and encourage peace and restfulness. When lavender essential oil is mixed with peppermint in carrier oil and is rubbed on the temples, it helps relieve tension headaches. Lavender's powers include helping one to relax, helping one to live a long life, attracting romance, peace, and joy. It is also used for healing spells, making wishes come true, and happiness. To send a little lavender magic to a friend who could use a little peace and happiness, write a note and send it on lavender-scented paper. To do this, take a few lavender flowers and rub them gently in your hands to start to release the scent and then rub the lavender flowers gently onto the piece of paper that you wrote the note on. The paper should pick up the scent quickly. Write down your wishes for your friend's happiness and then send it. Your friend will be delighted. Turning over to Cunningham, he reports one legend that the lavender plant is so powerful that if a someone who is depressed simply has to gaze upon the plant and all sorrow will depart and a joyous feeling will settle upon that person. It also says that the odor of lavender is conducive to long life and so should be smelled as often as possible if this is a concern. I'm down with that. Lavender smells very good. It also mentions lavender can be carried to see ghosts. So if you carry lavender with you, it will raise your powers to see ghosts. It's also added to purification baths in case you've seen too many ghosts and now you need to kind of clean up your aura. Wish divination. Uh, place lavender under your pillow while thinking of your wish. Do this just prior to retiring for the night. In the morning, if you have dreamt of anything relating to your wish, it will come true. However, if you did not dream, or if your dreams were unconnected with your wish, it will not manifest. That's an interesting divination, although I wouldn't put 100% on it because often we don't remember our dreams. So we might have dreamt about our wish and then just forgotten it. Our last magical plant is aloe vera. Think of a fleshy, spiky space plant, and you might have a picture of aloe vera in your mind. Known to provide healing powers to burns and skin irritations, aloe vera can also be used to help a fairy reconnect to her winks. Aloe vera plants are succulents that grow in well-drained, dry soil. Being a succulent plant, aloe vera plants have large, fleshy leaves that store large amounts of water. They do this because they are often in environments that are scarce of water. Aloe vera plants are native to Africa and areas around Africa, including Madagascar, the Arabian Peninsula, and smaller islands surrounding the continent. Aloe vera goes, grows straight out of the ground into a fleshy rosette of sharply pointed leaves with spines down the sides. Besides their native habitats, aloe vera plants have also found themselves in many earth homes as quick relief to minor burns and slight scrapes. On modern earth, aloe vera is widely used as both an ornamental plant and a household first aid tool. When the thick fleshy leaves of an aloe vera plant are broken off, a yellowish gel is secreted. This gel has been found to have many incredible healing powers. The gel is commonly used to relieve pain and irritation from skin maladies and is common relief for minor burns, including sunburns. 
The gel's benefit is its ability to soothe the skin and reduce inflammation from minor burns, cuts, and scrapes. While aloe vera does have incredible healing powers, it should never be used as a substitute for traditional medicine, but instead as a complementary aid for the near magical properties it possesses. With aloe vera's super healing powers now known across the realms, many manufacturers are using it in products such as cosmetics, lotions, soaps, and sunscreens. The added aloe creates soothing lotions, lovely soaps, and healing sunscreens. Beyond Earth's mastery of aloe's healing powers in modern realms, aloe vera is known as a tool that can help a fairy regain her connection to her winks. Just like the application of aloe vera to a minor burn eases pain and can quicken the healing time, the application of aloe vera to a fairy can help her connect, reconnect, and repair a broken connection to her winks. The procedure to do this is as follows. Using one finger, collect, collect a slight dab of aloe vera. This could be directly from an aloe vera plant, from a hand lotion containing the plant, or a soap. Be careful not to get too much on your finger. Once you have a tiny bit, carefully rub it onto the back of the other hand. If you are right-handed, rub it into your right hand. If you're left-handed, place it on the back of your left hand. In ever-growing circles, move the aloe vera gel or lotion out to the edges of your hand, letting it soak in. This is why only a small amount should be used. While you're doing this, think carefully of your winks and focus your energy on it. The aloe vera will help to heal the connection to your winks. This can even be done on a monthly basis as needed, and is an excellent use of this magical earth plant. So that's the end of Guide to Earth Plants, and I think it ended on a really neat note. There's a useful fairy spell. But we still have to check in with Cunningham. He says the aloe is also protective. It guards against evil influences and prevents household accidents. In Africa and also in Mexico, aloe is hung over and around houses. Although I'm not sure how to take the leaves and hang them up. You know, I've never actually seen an aloe plant growing. I don't know how big the leaves are. I've just seen them like in little pots at the grocery store, so I don't know how big they grow. Uh, it says that in Mexico they are hung on wreaths with garlic bulbs and pictures of saints and packages of other magical herbs and lodestones and pine nuts and clumps of aloe are all hung on these big big wreaths that I guess impart magical ability to bring protection, luck, or money to the home. So that's pretty interesting. So they do that in Mexico. So that is the end of Earth Plants and my reading about them. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back for some more magical things sometime soon. Goodbye for now.